All right, guys, welcome again to our, our next amazing episode. I'm actually looking forward to today's episode now, but if you haven't subscribed, click on the subscribe button, click on the notifications bell, comment, let us know what you are selling, let us know what you're working on, let us know what your thoughts are. I have a phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal individual that I am interviewing today. I hope you are looking forward to the interview as much as I can, as much as I am rather. Uh, I just want to quickly read through her bio uh, so that you know exactly who I'm talking about. And I don't want you to be intimidated because this person is very down to earth and takes complicated subjects and bring them to the normal everyday person's level. All right. So uh, Dr. Vivian Kuma is a business leader, a property mogul, a farmer, entrepreneur, philanthropist, a global speaker, and an ambassador of network marketing professionals from Limpopo, but currently residing in South Africa, Johannesburg. Uh, so she's a pioneer in multi-level marketing, and she's had a great success with Long Reach Bioscience, where she serves as a director and inspires her employees to achieve great heights across Africa. Now, you must listen to this. In the past five years, she has produced more than 1,000 millionaires and, and has more than 500,000 team members. Through this platform, she has also benefited and provided a steady income for more than 300,000 African families. So she's a Pan-Africanist at heart. And we can continue reading and reading and reading and reading. Her bio is so long. <laughs> I even forgot to mention that she's even also produced her own pen. You know, seeing the need that was in the African communities of young girls not being able to uh, get pets during their menstrual cycles. She produced a pet that helps them with mm -hmm. this. Dr. Viv, as I call you, welcome to It's More Than Just Money uh, on the winner's circle section of It's More Than Just Money. I'm thank looking forward you. to our conversation, actually. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, you can see how excited I am. No, right? I'm also excited. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Witness, and to our viewers, Nyabonga, and thank you, thank you so much for tuning in. Yeah. Mm. So a lot of people hear so many great things that you mm. are doing. Not only in Africa or South Africa, but globally. I saw globally, the other yeah. time you're even speaking in the States. Yes. Uh, so which means your work extends borders, yeah. right? Mm, so what cool. exactly do you do? Who's else, Vivian? Did it always start like this? No. You know, when we see people <laughs> doing what you do, we assume they come from wealthy families. You're like, ah! They're probably, it's, it's privilege that comes nah, from the parents. Nah. Um, Vivian is a mother um, to two beautiful kids, uh, age 14 and 7. Mm -hmm. I'm a wife. Um, I'm a sister. Sister-in-law. You yeah. know, uh, and most importantly, I'm a born-again Christian. Yes. I come from a family of academics. I, that's why the PhD, yeah. um, where we were taught about the importance of education. You know, that the only thing that you have as a black child is education. So Vivian, yeah, basically my background has always been like that, that of education, mm -hmm. structured environment, you know, where my parents, they supported me, especially when it comes to education. And I'm from a banking sector. Uh, that's, that's the other background about Vivian. I've been in the banking sector for 10 years. I've built systems and most of my systems, they've changed the face of the banking sector, especially in Southern Hemisphere. Mm -hmm. I only resigned or rather retired um, five years ago. Yes, Ken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, fate, I always say fate led me to where I am today. Fate led yeah, you to where you are. Okay. I never planned for this. Um, I planned to retire uh, in the field of academics or IT. I never saw myself as someone that will be traveling the world, inspiring young girls, young women. I never saw that in me. It wasn't something that I planned. Um, as something that happened along the way, but it was never planned. Yeah. I didn't see myself doing what I'm doing. I didn't see myself selling product or encouraging young people to sell. No, it wasn't something that I planned. 
My background is that of go to school, get the right qualification, find a job, get married, you know, just that structured environment. Be a good girl. <laughs> be a good girl. And I've been a good girl, <laughs> you know, get married, have kids. That's it. That's my environment where I come from. But everything that is happening about Vivian right now, it shocks me as well. I mean, when I look back and look at what I'm doing now, I can't help but say, God, thank you. What you are doing with Vivian right now, it's amazing. Only you, God, know why this is happening. So when, when, where, where does your journey start? Like when you think about your journey as Vivian evolving over, over the years, mm. um, where does it start? Where do you come from? What's your background? I know you come from a background of academia, like you just said, but where does it all start going into your career and eventually building be where I am today beyond what you could have also imagined yeah. it started with a product I was introduced to this um, organic sanitary napkin six years ago uh, a gentleman uh, came to my house and introduced me to this product I fell in love with the product I used it it worked for me and I saw a need of introducing the product to the next person and that's how it all started and it just became a movement. It exploded. Every woman that started using the product um, just fell in love with it, you know. So it all started with the product, this amazing product that was introduced to me six years ago. I fell in love with it. I started using it. And I saw a need of telling the next person about it, you know. And uh, based on how it was received, that's how I was able to build my network. So the first network, it was my family, friends, and colleagues. Then from there, it expanded, you know, from province, um, from cities, province. Then eventually, it exploded outside of South Africa, which is my um, current country. Mm. And then I saw it, it just became a movement. Every woman loved the product. And then I saw a reason of making money out of it because everybody loved it. So I saw a business um, that there is an opportunity, there is a problem, there is a product that is saving that, um, there's a product that is sa <laughs> solving that problem, mm -hmm. and there's an opportunity to make money. That's how it all started. Mm -hmm. And then when this opportunity found you, uh, I'm using the word found you. Yeah. <laughs> when when yes. the opportunity found you, what were you busy with? You know, it's usually said that an opportunity must find you busy doing something. I was busy. I was employed. Mm -hmm. I was working for one of the top uh, banks in South Africa as uh, one of their project managers. So it found me working. I was busy. Yeah. And at that time, I was also studying, busy with my PhD. So I was busy with my studies, my career as well, building my career within the financial sector. Yeah. And I was a new mom. You know, my son was born at that time. At that time, when this opportunity was presented to me. I was still working for one of the top banks in South Africa. And my son, um, I just gave birth to my son who's seven years. Uh, and at that time, my son was only four months old. Um, and I was also busy with my PhD and publishing some articles. So I was busy with my career, my studies, and juggling the role of being a new mom to a newborn baby. Mm. And then, yeah. So I can say basically you're right. It found me busy, but I wasn't busy with the opportunity. I was busy with other things. Yeah. Mm. So, so as we, the reason I asked that question is to basically gauge what kind of mindset you were in yes. at that time to grab on that particular opportunity that came. So you were busy with your studies. You were busy mm. with your employment. I mean, we were taught that get a job, yes. get married, get married, and you'll be fine. And, and the only exactly thing, that. and I did that, but my income was not enough. So that's why I was pursuing my studies. Yes. You understand? Because I needed more. You're right. I, I think I understand where your question is, uh, where your question is going. I mean, at that time, I just had a baby, which means there were more expenses in terms of the medical aid because there was an extra person in the house. Yes. You know, um, so it was very important for Vivian to study. Why? I mean, we believed that through education, one will be able to get a better job, you know, uh, or 
a better increment. So I was looking for that because financially we were okay. I can't say we were okay, but with a new baby in the house, um, there was a bit of a strain, you know, on our budget. So I was really busy in terms of my study and my career because I wanted to be better, you know, and also to get a better increment at work. Okay. So, mm. that's, that's an important part because yeah. a lot of us, when we look at our careers, like when we're working, yes. whether you're a doctor, an inter- mm. uh, a nurse, a career person, mm. right? We think that for us to make more money, we obviously have to upskill. But that's we how, but it is the system. The system is like that. That's, that's how the system is designed. And you are you know? saying now, what I'm hearing, if I listen to you with another mm. ear, mm. you are saying that system does not work. There's a different system that actually yes. helped you yes. to build that income. Can you talk more on that? Yes, I agree with you. That system, I, I was a slave. You understand? I mean, getting a master's degree, it took me two years. Yeah. And well, your was, first, so you did your, my what, honors. your honors? Yeah. And doing my master's, there was another two years. Yes. Just to get that increment. Just think about what, it. What was the percentage? <laughs> I, I think it was five or six. Five percent. Exactly. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, you want that. And that five percent will go towards your tax. You know, and yeah. also your lifestyle as well. I mean, you're an IT specialist. So now you want to prove to your uh, former classmates that, hey. I'm doing well I'm now. I'm doing well. I've got a nice right. car. Um, I've got a nice car. I've got a nice property. So my job, um, the career, what I'm doing currently now, it has to match now the lifestyle. Yes. But my income was not in line with that. So the system never worked. So I was a slave of the system. That never, it didn't favor me. West part, I'm a woman, you are black. You'll be sitting next to a man. You know, Mm -hmm. you do the same thing what a man can do. Mm -hmm. But still, because of the system never favored me, I knew that I will not earn the same income as weakness. We'll do the same thing. Build and break the system. Um, Everything will be the same. But the income bracket will not be the same. So the only way for me... Maybe to end the exact amount as witness, it was to study further and do that. And it was tiring. I worked like a donkey. You've got kids, you've got a husband. Until when I was introduced to this opportunity, and then I was like, there's a better way of doing things. I can't continue like this. There has to be a better way of doing things. And when I saw this product and how it was received uh, by many young people, especially women that have been suffering from issues that I was suffering from, I saw an opportunity of making more. You know, I just saw financial freedom, what I've been looking for. I mean, working for years, toiling, getting all, remember it wasn't only the degree. I had to also get the necessary certificate to certify me to be who I was, you know. In order for one to be a certified business analyst, you had to have certificates, project manager, the same. Your qualification is just an entry level. I needed to have more, you know, and it's not only about the paper, you had to deliver as well. So I did all of those things for years and until a point where I said there had to be a better way. And when I saw this product, I saw the end from the beginning. I knew that a woman, I mean, for every three minutes, a girl child is born. Every three seconds, as we are here, a girl child is born. And for as long as a girl child is born, there will always be a need for a sanitary napkin. But not just a sanitary napkin, a good quality organic sanitary napkin. And the products that I was introduced to, it met all those requirements. Um, It solved the problems that I was suffering from. And I knew that the problem that I'm suffering from, it is the same problem to the next woman. So that's why most of the women, when they saw the products, they were like, wow, Vivian, you brought a solution. Mm -hmm. And it became a movement. That's how I was able to build my team up to 500,000, mm-hmm. um, a team of people that were using the same product. So you can do your own calculation. If you've got more than 500,000 people using the same product mm-hmm. um, on a monthly basis, how much is that? What did it take to build this movement? How did you build it? Like, you know, I, I, to build a movement from yes. scratch, it's definitely not something that's easy. You don't even study how to do that in the classroom. It's just something you have to build from scratch. How did you do it? Like I said, um, 
I had to identify a problem. I knew that there's a problem. The mm. problem was with the current products that we're using as women. That was number one. Yeah. I had to identify a problem. And I knew that the product that I had was addressing that problem. You know, it wasn't easy. You, you were introduced to this thing. How did you know that I used it can it. be big? I used it. It was. Did you know me. that the movement can be big or it was just a faith that you had or your mindset where you were in a different space? I want to see the space <laughs> you're in to build this huge movement of over 500,000 people. You know, it all starts with belief. I believed in the product. It okay. worked for me. That's what I'm saying. I started by using the product, you yeah. know, um, yeah. for a few months. Yeah. I used the product at least for six months. It worked for me. Yeah. And Can when, you give me the product for everyone to see what exactly <laughs> we are talking about? I started using the product. Okay. For those of you who are watching, this is the product. Dignity. Lasting inspiration. Let's put it there for everyone to see. You're still telling us how I you were able using to build the this product. movement. I started using the product. The product worked for me. And I introduced the product to my family, close friends and family. They also loved the product. Mm -hmm. And when I saw their reaction towards the product, which was the same reaction that I had, then I knew that this is going to work. I knew that there's no way it will fail. But I didn't think it will grow the way it did. But I knew that we've got something here. We are working on to something here because this is a product that we've been looking. We've been looking for as women. I mean, I've tried all different brands. They never worked for me. You know, when it is that time of the month, it was a problem. It was a struggle for me and not only for me, for most of the women. So when I started using that pr uh, product and all the problems that I had, they immediately disappeared. Then mm. I knew that we are on top of, we are onto something here. And, um, I mean, I've been an analyst for long, for years. So I know when something will work, you know, yes. because when you're an analyst, your mind is tuned or trained to think futuristic. Your mind is always um, about problem solving. Mm -hmm. You understand? So it becomes easier for me automatically to do that. So when I saw the, pro the, the product, I knew that, okay, this product is addressing the problem that I have. And it might not give, it might not make an impact now, but looking at the future, this is what we need. Mm -hmm. It might not be used by me, but this is a product I will want my daughter or the next generation to be using. Then that's when I started talking about it. You know, my slogan was, there's a pad. There's a pad that I think it can change our lives. And everybody started asking questions because it started, it started as a hashtag that women, I'll go on social media and say, Bafaz, I think I found a solution to our problem. Then they will be inboxing me. What do you mean? I said, I found a pet. A pet that can change our bank balance. A pet that can also change our lives. Then they will be like, okay, tell us more about it. And I started showing them how we can make money, you know, and how we can change our lives mm -hmm. with this sanitary napkin. Mm -hmm. Who will say no to a passive income? Who will say no to an additional income? I even showed them how they can make extra by selling or referring the next person to use the product. Then think about it. Who will say no to an extra income? Mm -hmm. You know, and we had three, six, 21 people coming on board. And eventually it became a network that grew uncontrollably because everyone fell in love with this product. It wasn't only women, men as well. Men saw a business opportunity in this product. Then mm -hmm. it grew to a point where we could no longer service the market. You know, the company that I was representing could no longer now meet the demand because the demand of this organic pets grew, mm -hmm. especially in the African market. So I'm listening to you and I'm thinking there's a part of your experience as an analyst yeah. that came to play yes. into building the network yes. or even seeing the opportunity. Mm. How important is wine's past experience or training in actually being able to monetize in certain opportunities. It is important. I always say we do not go to school to be employed, but we go to school for application, you know, and or rather for deployment. My past experiences has shaped me to the woman I am. If I didn't have that IT background, that analysis background, I don't think I would be here. Oh, I don't think I would have made a success out of this. That worked at my advantage. You know why? I mean, if I come and say I'm Vivian Mukome, I'm Dr. Vivian Mukome, I've done this and this, I've worked 
and name, naming all the companies that I've worked for and my success story. Won't you buy into me? People, they buy into you before they buy into the products. So I used my past mm -hmm. experience, my success story from my former employee to work for me, from my former employer, you know, to design the system that I have now. People, they buy into success story and people, they like to associate themselves with success and with someone that has made it before. So my background from the banking sector and the success story that I brought into this, it created a bit of, you know, trust. People trusted me that, okay, this woman worked before. She's not desperate. She's not here to scam us. You know, she knows what she's talking about. And if she's saying the system is going to work, it's going to benefit us, they trusted what I said. Yeah. So I can say that worked at my advantage. Yeah. I didn't have to work double in comparison with someone who didn't have my educational background and the experience. And that educational background, you know, there's something about education, Mr. Witness, that I want to add. A person that has went to school, you've got a lot to lose. It's not the same as a person. Or Sayang Skolo, who has nothing to lose. I have a lot to lose. I don't only report. Um, there's a lot of body of knowledge that I report to. You know, before I can do something, I have to think about the banking sector, the IT sector, the body of knowledge of um, project management, business analysis, those are the heads, you know, um, my professors, you know. So those are the people that I need to think of before entering into any new thing, you know, because you don't want to find yourself in a situation where you introduce something and at the end of the day, when it fails, it compromises as well your relationship that you had um, with uh, the people that I've already mentioned. So in a way, that, like I've said, it did help and it created trust because they knew that if Vivian is saying this works, definitely she's done proper research. Mm. I hear accountability yes. in you as you speak as well. Mm. And some of the bodies of knowledge and the people you mentioned yes. are people that also men men mentored you. I'm yes. guessing I, I hear professors. And yes, they have mentored me and they, I mean, I knew that they were holding me accountable. Mm. How so, important is that? Like for young entrepreneurs, women, men that want to break into any space? It's important to have a mentor. It is very important. I can't emphasize on that uh, other than I've already done uh, the last weekend. Someone asked me the same thing. It's very important. A mentor is someone that sees the best in you or sees what you don't see in yourself. You know, I am a product of mentorship. There are people that have contributed to where I am today. And I'm always accountable to them. Before I can think of introducing anything or writing anything on social media, the first thing I ask myself, will my mentor approve of this? Is this representing them? Is this representing me? You know, so it's very important to have a mentor because mm -hmm. they shape you. And also, case shortcut. You know, instead of... Um, Having a mentor is a shortcut. It's a shortcut to your success. Okay. You know, instead of um, uh, Vivian taking 10 years, it, will, it can take me two years because my mentor has been there. My mentor has done mm -hmm. it before me, you know, so he will show me how to get there faster and better than they did. So that's the advantage of having a mentor. My success um, is as a result of people that have guided me, have told me that Vivian... You don't have to take a long cut to get to where you want to. There's a shortcut. Do it like this, then you'll see the results. So yes, it is very important. Mm -hmm. So I wanna I wanna ask you about your foundation. Mukome right? Foundation. Mukome, yeah. Even Mukome Foundation. Yeah. But before I get into that, there is a very strong line that you and I share. Yeah. That we both love so much. Sell something. Sell something. Yeah. Um, what does it mean to you? And, and why is it important? And I remember one time I was attending one of your talks mm. and you talked about our grandmothers and the fact that yes. they were always selling, selling we are something. The, we are we are the, the product, product of, of that. Yes. yes, of someone that was selling mm -hmm. something. No, I today are we looking down on the very same thing that has made us. I'm the product of that. Uh, and the reason why I strongly advocate for this is that... Um, you know, every business exists because of the verb, the verb sell. You know, I've traveled um, from I've traveled around the globe. 
um, in different in different parts of Africa. I've went to northern Africa, eastern, eastern, western, and southern hemisphere, which is us. And what I've seen with north, west, and eastern is the spirit of hustling in them. And in southern hemisphere. My problem is that we have lost that spirit of hustling within us. You know, I'm not sure if it's our system, our educational system, what our educational system has instilled in us that you need to go to school, you know, find a job and retire. I'm not sure if could it be that. I might be wrong. But when you go to those countries that I've mentioned, like your Nigeria, your Kinshasa, a child as young as 15, you'll find them in the street selling, hustling. You come here, it's a different story altogether. And that don't see me, you know, or why are we not having that? I mean, you look at the unemployment rate is high in Southern Hemisphere in comparison with those countries. I mean, when you look at the, the unemployment rate in Southern Hemisphere between the age of 15 and 25 years, this is our young people, the future generation. It's, it's, for me, that was shocking. And I knew that something has to be done. I had to use my influence, you know, to encourage young people that, listen, Vivian with her qualification is still selling. There's no shame in with selling. PhD, exactly. Vivian is selling. With all the monies that she has made, it is through selling. You know why I was saying that? It was to break the stereotype. Her selling is for the poor. Selling is for the desperate. Selling is for, for the uneducated. I was trying to break that stereotype. And after I've done that, Many people, I mean, I received more than thousands of messages. There's a woman who came to my inbox and said, I was ashamed to say I'm even selling. But after I heard you and heard your story, now I'm even encouraged. And I said, there's nothing. There's nothing wrong with that. I've never, and I, 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 I like repeating this. I'm yet to see a multimillionaire employed. I'm yet to see one. But I've seen, and I'm one of them, multi-millionaires as a result of selling. Then, hang on, we need to sit now and evaluate the system. If Vivian with a PhD could not even afford the lifestyle that she's living now as a result of selling, then something is wrong. Something is wrong. So that's why I had to encourage young people to say, with your qualification, sell. With your qualification sell, start small. That's how I started my business. I started by using someone else, sanitary napkin, selling it. Today I have my own dignity. But where did it start? Selling someone else's product. I started small. Today I am manufacturing and distributing for bigger organizations. But did it start here? No, it started small. So it... The whole point of this uh, witness, it was just to encourage young people or never be ashamed. There's no shame in selling, but there's shame in begging. Mm. But there's no shame in selling. Go deeper there. There's yeah. no shame in selling, but there's, but there's shame, shame in begging. begging. Yeah, there's deeper. shame in begging. You I've know? never seen it, someone become a multimillionaire by begging. Exactly. But I've seen someone become a multimillionaire by selling. selling. And I'm one of them. Yeah, I'm so that's, right yeah, next to her. that's what I was trying. That was my message that I was trying to send to young people. So if they look at Vivian, Vivian becomes a symbol for hope. Because they will look at her, they'll look at her lifestyle and say, wow. So she made it through selling. If she could do it, I too can. That was my message. Or if she could do it, you too can. So let this thing be a movement. Let's adopt the spirit of our brothers in Africa, in other parts of Africa, like your Northern Africa, Eastern Africa, and Western. Let's adopt their spirit. Go right now. I challenge you. Are you going to Go starting. Young people from the age of 15, 16, they're selling. And they will not leave the traffic light or the intersection until whatever they're selling is sold out for that day. It's young people. But you come here, our young people, you tell them about selling, they'll tell you, mm. and what is said, they'll rather even go and sell. Working for somebody Someone. else. And selling more and selling for, for themselves. themselves. Yeah. And taking 100% profit. You know, I've seen people, 
Bare kisa di sim card. Yeah. You know, they, not that I'm saying there's anything there's nothing wrong, wrong with it. There. But I've but, seen them working for your But I, I see what you mean. Yeah. If it's time for them to start something, buy and sell something for themselves, they, they don't do it. But if a company says, uh, let me employ you. You see, the problem here is that we like the to be employed. Employment. Empl employment. If a company says, can I employ you, sell this sanitary napkin for me, and this is the profit I'm going to give you. You know how many people will jump into that opportunity? A lot. Right. Because employment, security. Maybe it's because of security we like that. I don't know. But yeah. my, message is, my message is simple to young people. You can start. Start small. Look at what Vivian has achieved. Um, was it easy? No. It wasn't easy. It was a lonely journey. Mm -hmm. I was loved at. I was a mockery. My husband at one stage even doubted me. My parents, they doubted what I was doing. They were worried about me. For uh, How can you leave um, a job where a salary was guaranteed? I mean, I had a salary that was guaranteed where I work or not. But I knew that come month and I'll get paid. So leaving mm -hmm. that guarantee salary to go and sell a product, to mm -hmm. but I wasn't. I saw nothing. It was a huge risk, isn't it? A, a huge one. A huge one. So, so how did you transition from that? I saw now there's farming in your portfolio, there's property investing in your portfolio. There's a whole lot of other businesses. Yeah. Now, you had transitioned from a job yes. to now a business where no. you were selling somebody else's product yes you made a success out of it build a movement out yes. of it and then now you transitioned into property investing farming and all sorts of other businesses mm -hmm. where did that mindset an academic is supposed to be in a mm -hmm. job sitting but here yeah. you are transitioning so fast from mm -hmm. one industry to another to another making mm -hmm. a success success out of it um once on killer risky how one it becomes in you you'll want to take the next one. Okay. I mean, I took a risk, you know, yeah. an income that was guaranteed. That was huge. Then after that, I realized, well, you know what, Vivian, if you want to make more money um, and do better than where you are, you have to innovate. Be innovative. I mean, adapt to changes. Move faster. You understand? Um... You can't tell the same story over and over again. You know, sure. I had to look for new ways of innovating myself. So what are, what are you saying? Are you saying build a new story if you can? Yes, I had to build a new story. I can't be telling a story that I sold someone else sanitary napkin forever. I had to have a new story. You know, uh, and I have, a, Vivian always said, I mean, I have what we call a vision board. And I planned for my life. I knew that I would be in the financial sector for 10 years. I wasn't fired. I wasn't retrenched. Actually, I left at my peak when I was doing well. When most of my projects were doing well, I left. Because I knew what I have to be here for 10 years. I can't be here for more than 10 years. The same thing as when I was selling this product. I knew that there has to be a new story. Because, they, I mean... The first part, um, when I started selling and it became a movement, that was a success. Everybody was talking about it. And while people were talking about it, I knew that Vivian, now you need to find something. You know, um, re, I mean, reinvent yourself. Be innovative. You can't be selling for someone forever. You have learned skill. You have learned the skills from those people. Now, how can you better yourself? You know, and that's when I moved into property development. Um, I moved into construction, Karupi Wamo as well, you yeah. know, learned the hard way. Now it's part of my story yeah. that I can tell new people or when you enter into construction, what you must look at, you know, the do's and the don'ts. Farming as well. It wasn't easy going into farming because I thought I would make millions like I did with selling. Guess what? For two years, it's only now that we are doing the breaking even. For the last two years, there was nothing that was coming in. Then recently I moved into now owning my own sanitary na napkin, which is the space of manufacturing. I look for new stories every season. A story that I can package into my life. Um, stories of five years ago. I mean, it's the same as your thesis. The thesis that I wrote 
the expiry time for this is those who are academics they will know and they will attest to this is five years mm -hmm. after five yeah. years you must come up with something new you yeah. can you can't the world even, has changed the world has changed you can't even cite an article that was written more than five years ago then it means wazala you're not reading you know mm -hmm. so the same thing with my life every five years there need to be a new story something different about vivian that That's I so know powerful. that it will inspire the next person. I can't be telling you the stories of six years ago. Slow board alone. Six years, we made more money. Slow board. Now I need to tell you, Ray, witness, Kineka Kena go construction, but knock. This is what I've learned. Kineka Kena into sports way, but knock. You know, it's a different story. And these are the experiences that I've learned there. Witnesses, Kikeni now into manufacturing plant. Let's see where this will take us. Building a new narrative. That's me. And I get joy in doing that. You know, that excites me. The adrenaline, that excites me. Where does the mindset of reinventing yourself and building new stories come from? Because a lot of people, mm. they rest on their success. No. You know, one person achieves something and they're there. This is my thing. This is what I've built. But it sounds like with you, you build your success and you're like, what's the next success? What's the next? Yes. Where, where does that mindset come from? As the mindset is, it, it comes from my, from my academic background, like I've said. Yeah. You know, as academics, we know that um, the article that was published five years ago, you cannot bring it afterwards. Yeah. It's old. Yeah. The world, but there are many academics that are resting on their success from 20 years ago. That are not achieving much as much as you are, not even 10%. I, I don't know why they're doing that. But with Vivian, I'm never okay with just being ordinary. Never okay with that. Um, I always, I believe there's more to me. You know, I'm now living a life of a purpose. You understand? It's about an impact. You know, when you check my status, I normally have this line that says mine is to inspire, influence and impact. That talks to a life of a purpose. And if you live a life of a purpose, you cannot be the same. You must constantly um, innovate and constantly find new ways of doing things. Sure. You know, uh, I the pad that I was selling it was made or tailored for Asian women. It wasn't for African women. I had to come up with a pad that will suit. It must, it must be the same quality as what I was selling. But this one, I had to think of a way that this one will be for an African child. And the name as well, it has to be, it has to do with an African child. It has to do with a woman, how to restore a dignity of a woman. Do you so Vivian is always thinking, you know, I, yeah, I think. a thinker, you know, how can I make this better? Yes, it's there, but I can make it better, you know, <laughs> and now I don't lock myself. Even if there's a wall, I will always say, maybe there's a way or I can break through into that wall. You know, I do not limit myself and I don't believe in that. I mean, I was saying the same thing to my daughter, okay, really scholarship go USA. Um, and she was saying, mommy, because my mother for boot camp. And she said to me, but mommy, it means three months of school. And that is a term. I said, it's fine, my baby. We'll find a way. If it means you study online, you'll do it. But you can't miss this opportunity. Because normally the scholarship, they give it to um, kids who are after matric. But with her, they made an exception. Um, she's still in grade eight. So meaning they want her to come to New York Academy when she's in grade nine. Then I said to her, you'll do it. We'll find a way, yeah. you know, um, don't limit yourself. And that's the same thing that I'm teaching to my children. Don't limit yourself. When an opportunity, you know, an opportunity, we have what we call the rigor moment, that open opportunity. It comes once, it can never come again. And once it's there, I believe that take an opportunity, make use of it. Mm -hmm. Don't think how it will happen. If it presents itself, Mamel, now I'm this person. If we jump off the cliff, I will. 
I will ask about the parachute. Since the kilo class, give one or oh, I should have had a parachute. I believe in that. That sense of agency is there for me. I have that sense of agency within me. And opportunities here, use it. The rest will fall into place later. But never miss an opportunity or postpone El Rotayeta later. So my favorite quote of all time says, the opportunity of a lifetime yeah? must be seized yes. in the lifetime of that opportunity. Exactly. Thank you. So meaning it's got an expiry date. Yeah. Right. If it's presented so, now, we're yeah. not sure how it will be presented again. And that talks to being innovative. You can't run a testimony that is expired. Sure. While people are celebrating you now, when are you need to think of the next thing? While they are celebrating you, you need to think of the next thing that you are doing for yourself and how to improve yourself. You must always improve yourself. I, I don't sound like five years ago or three years ago. I believe we must improve as people and do whatever it takes to improve, to be better. I see things now differently. Mm. I reason differently. I react differently to money. You know, family. At first it was more about making money, but now it's more about my children. My children, my, my husband, my family. You know, um, that's something we must constantly improve, innovate. We can't sound like six years ago, otherwise we're total about And unfortunately, or rather fortunately, the generation early Moyona, it's a generation ailing sharp. They've got information. And the generation that is hungry for new knowledge. And they constantly want to learn new things. Then I have no choice but to keep up Lebon. So we drank to a close. <laughs> <laughs> and I really wish I was sitting here all, all day okay. and listening to everything that you're saying now. Now, I'm going to give you a moment mm. uh, to talk about Vivian Mukume Foundation because mm. I know there's a lot of work that you do, yeah, that I do. for the communities. Mm. And then at, after that, I want you to talk to the viewer at home and say something to him or her. Is that the young person that says, how's Vivian? You don't understand my situation. Mm. Yeah. The foundation was formed in 2018 uh, together with my husband. And the reason behind the foundation is because we saw a need. You know, um, or there's a need for sanitary napkin, you know, in our country. Not only in our country, but in Africa as a whole. And Vivian, as an academic and as a person that believes in the importance of education, I saw no need for a girl child not to go to school because they don't have a basic thing like a sanitary napkin. I was touched when I, when I went through the stats. I mean, witness 70%. And we're talking about South Africa. We're not even talking about Africa, other, other parts of Africa. Only South Africa, which is regarded as your USA of Africa. Now, if Africa, that is considered to be your USA of Africa, we're sitting at 70% girls without sanitary napkin. 70%, meaning 7 out of 10. And out of that 70%, 30% do not go to school at all when it is that time of the month. Now, what does it mean? It means a girl child will miss on schooling because of something that they have no control over. They have no control over going on their period. It's not something that they choose. It's something that happens naturally. So now, now a girl child that is already, I mean, by the virtue of their sex, being a woman, and now it's also, they are also disadvantaged because of something that happens naturally to them. I had to do something about it. And that's how my foundation was formed. So the, the goal of the foundation and the focus was on the education, you know, uh, and keeping a girl child in school, making sure that we keep a girl child in school. And how? By giving them not just any pets, but something that I use, 
and something that my daughter used, which is high quality organic pets. And we made a vow with my husband that we'll donate for the whole year. We're not gonna give them one month supply and that's it. So for the last five years, we've been doing that, um, donating to different schools around South Africa for the whole year, you know? So it wasn't only about donation, but also inspiring them to say, irrespective of your background or the challenges that you are facing, remain in class, go to school, study. I want the best out of you. So that's why my donation, if you pay attention to them, they are done differently. I don't just go and donate, but it's more of inspiring a young girl, you know, more of giving them hope. We will spend our money by inviting, we'll normally invite, um, you know, your artists, your celebrities, that are coming from that particular location. For example, I went to Alexander twice and I had celebrities that came from Alexander to be part of the distribution. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole point of also having those celebrities would be to inspire those girls that I am Brian Baloy, I'm from Alexander, yeah. but I've made it, yeah. you know. So the foundation is doing well and it's been active for, I mean, the longest. You can calculate from 2018 until now. Um, and Congratulations yeah. on the amazing work. Yes, thank you. Uh, so we, we've been donating those pets um, that we were buying from our partners. In the future, we're looking at donating our own. Sure. You know, um, sure. from next year, I'm excited looking at donating my own brand uh, to those girls. They are close to my heart. Mm -hmm. um, to you, it might be a pet, but you don't know what it does to that young girl. Sure. You know, uh, when it that, when it is that time of the month, they don't know what to do. Can you speak to that young girl as well as that young man that is sitting at home? Probably probably lost hope. Yeah. And they're saying, I don't have a solution. There are no jobs, <laughs> they say. Yes, there are no jobs. And you don't know my background, they say. No, there are no jobs. Yeah. I agree with you, there are no jobs, but the there are job opportunities and opportunities are everywhere. So to a young girl that is uh, watching this um, show, I just want to encourage you or rather give you hope but that there is hope, you know, Ksani hope. Yes, I agree with you. There are no jobs, but there are job opportunities. Find any legit product. Um, the secret is legit. Find any legit product, sell it and sell it hard. And remember this, there is no shame in selling. There's no shame, but there's shame in begging. So find any legit product, sell it, and sell it hard. That's how I made my first million. I sold a sanitary napkin. I sold a toothpaste, and I sold it hard. And I sold it hard. So that's my message to them. Sell something. Well, guys, if you're listening to this and you're inspired... Follow us, Vivian, on all social media platforms. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Comment. Let us know what yeah. inspired you. I think the part that has me the most, as usual, is sell something. Sell something. Mm. Must have something that you are selling. If you're a family, sell something. In a family, we, we must have someone. People must sell. <laughs> yeah. So in a family, we must have someone that is selling. Absolutely. You know, people must sell witness, people must sell, there's no shame. Let this be a movement, you know, let's encourage each other. I'm doing it, my team is doing it. Find any legit product, sell it and sell it hard. Wow. Well, Osviv, you are amazing. Thank that you. That was amazing. May God Thank continue you. to bless you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for being an inspiration. To our viewers, I love you, I love you so much. Yeah, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok as Tengi Sen. Yeah. And I'm not ashamed of that. All right, guys. You Thank heard you. it here at the Winner's Circle on the It's More Than Just Money Movement channel. I love you. We'll chat to you again next week. Ciao, ciao. I think that it was the longest. Nope. Not Are even. you sure? It was just... Oh, I, was, I was worried about the owner, Minas. Wow. Ah.